Hi YouTube, I'm Gareth Beavis and I'm here with the Samsung Galaxy S4 taking you through the main features of this cutting edge smartphone. As you can see, it's a slim, powerful, plastic design. Uh, it's got one of the greatest screens that we've seen on a smartphone. It's super light and while the plastic back might not be to everyone's liking, it's a really nice smartphone in the hand. The Samsung Galaxy S4 has got a 1080p Full HD display which is in the same package as the Galaxy S3 which means the screen is larger but pushed further to the edges of the phone. It looks really nice and ideally it's just the phone that you want to watch videos on, you want to browse the internet and it's just so sharp you can't really understand until you get really close in so it's something you really want to take a look at and just enjoy. The interface on the Samsung Galaxy S4 is based on a new version of TouchWiz. Now Android 4.2 is a really great thing to see here because it brings a faster version of the operating system, it makes it quicker to use and gives you more options to play with when you're messing around with the phone. And as you can see there's lots and lots of widgets on the home screen that are automatically there for people to understand a little bit more about what the smartphone can do. You've got the option for more services there, uh, travel is understandably there, Flipboard. So basically the whole interface is designed to get the smartphone user into the phone as quickly as possible. The apps are very well laid out and really it gives you a very instant portal into what is a very powerful smartphone. Internet browsing on the Samsung Galaxy S4 is one of the best experiences we've seen on a smartphone. That's not just because the screen is so full HD and clear, but also because the processor is upgraded, so everything flows by a little bit quicker. 4G is also on board from the outset, so even if you want to load a really in-depth, high-res page, it doesn't take very long to achieve, and you're there with the text as soon as you want it. Zooming in and out of the text is also very fluid. These are the things that people really look for on a smartphone. Also, you've got a whole bunch of options here that really allow you to get to the heart of what the smartphone is about. So whether it's adding bookmarks, going incognito, or having a desktop view for the actual full desktop view, everything's there very quickly, and we really can't fault the internet experience on the Galaxy S4. We really love the Samsung Galaxy S4 for its media capabilities, not just because of the full HD high-res screen, but also just the amount of things that you can actually do with it. The 64 gigabytes of memory is supplemented by a memory card as well. That means 128 gigabytes of onboard storage, which means you can never really fill it up with anything more than movies and music and YouTube clips. The capability is really there. And you haven't got to worry about the phone slowing down massively or, or things like that. So really, it is one of the ultimate media marvels because of the fact that it just looks so clear uh, there's a bunch of innovation on top that we're not sure really works. Things like smart pause where you can look at the screen and it will pause when you look away. This doesn't work as well as we'd like it to in real life, but there's real technological advancements that show that Samsung is at least pushing forward with the Galaxy S4. The camera on the Samsung Galaxy S4 is a 13 megapixel effort, which brings a really high res, very powerful experience to the phone. As we can see here, the colors are very well reproduced thanks to the Full HD screen. It's got the Super AMOLED technology, which means that everything looks very clear, very sharp, and the colors are very well reproduced. Now, the only problem we've really got with the camera is that the user interface is a little bit confusing. As you can see, you've got a number of different icons and different things you can do with it. Even just pressing that, you know, you've got to spend a lot of time working out what each of these do. It is good the fact that Samsung's put so many different options in here to play around with, so you can really get the right exposure or the right ISO levels that you're looking for. But for the novice user, it's going to be a little bit confusing when you've got things like the iPhone or the HTC One that's just point and shoot and you take the pictures that you want. Now, the good thing about this is that the 13 megapixel camera takes some really nice shots. You can get a really good, well-crafted shot if you're looking really hard for the right framing and that kind of thing. We do like things like the auto night mode. It means that when things get a little bit dark, you don't have to worry about making sure you've got the right setting. It will find it for you and turn it on. And while you do have to hold the phone a little bit longer, you do get a better picture from it. Apart from that, you do have these nice modes as well. So if you're looking to maybe take a sports picture or erase people from the outside, this is all very easy to do and it takes the interface from the Galaxy camera, which is really nice and does make it much easier for the user to use. Now, the only problem we've got with it is that it just works a little bit slowly when you get into the gallery. Opening up pictures can take a little bit of time and some people will feel like they want to get it more quickly and see what they're actually taking a picture of. But beyond that, it's a very strong camera. We like it a lot and we're looking forward to testing it out really strongly.